In the fall of 1807, Manuel Lisa and John Coulter, plus a couple of other lesser known mountain men, were building a cabin next to a crow village at the confluence of the Bighorn and Yellowstone rivers. I think roughly modern day Billings, Montana. They were the first trappers to set up camp so far west in the newly acquired Louisiana Territory. And Coulter was about to become the first member of the white tribe to walk into Wyoming. His was a monumental trek that set off the era of the mountain men. It's been suggested, with almost no evidence, that two French explorers, the Verendry brothers, might have entered northeast Wyoming in 1743. Maybe. Others have claimed that Spanish miners coming up from Taos might have ventured as far north as southern Wyoming, but no report of it has ever been found in the Spanish records from Taos and Santa Fe. However, we do know that John Coulter walked through northwest Wyoming in the fall of 1807 and winter of 1808. Right now, I'm standing in one of the most impressive places in the state of Wyoming. And if you live in Wyoming, you know that's a uh, pretty bold statement. Uh, I am at the mouth of Clark's Fork Canyon. To my west is the Yellowstone Plateau. To my east, Powder River Basin. In the fall of that year, Manuel Lisa and John Coulter decided they needed to know what was to the south. They wanted to know if there were Spanish they could maybe trade with to the south. So John Coulter loaded up a pack. He had no more than 33 pounds of equipment and started to the south. He followed the Clark's Fork River and then started into what is now Yellowstone via this canyon. Coulter hiked up the canyon and then turned south, passing through what we call Sunlight Basin today. He then continued south and east. John Coulter came south between the Absorca Range and Hart Mountain to right here in Cody. And there he later would describe this horrible smelling spring. Well, that spring right down here has been known as Coulter's Hell ever since. Coulter then proceeded up the river between these two mountains and on the backside of Cedar Mountain, he found another friendly crow village. That village is now underneath the Buffalo Bill Reservoir, but those friendly crow helped him out a little bit and gave him direction south and east into the valley that they called the Huchashi, or the Wind River Valley. Coulter was warned by the crow that he might run into Eastern Shoshone near the Wind River, and they may not be as friendly as the crow, but the mountain man wasn't scared. He had learned to speak some of the Shoshone language from a woman named Sacagawea on the Coro Discovery with Lewis and Clark, and he figured he could get by. Coulter crossed the Absorcas at uh, Blondie Pass, about 10 miles north of where I'm at right now. That brought him down into the Wind River Basin. He then followed the Wind River up to the northwest towards Togety Pass. Coulter crested Togety Pass and he must have realized he was going over the Continental Divide. I mean, he'd already been over the Continental Divide before with uh, Lewis and Clark on the Cora Discovery. He came over the pass and knew he was on the other side, which meant he was in territory controlled possibly by the Blackfoot tribe, which was a scary thing. It was also, it was December, it was dark, it was cold, and he was in deep snow. But he continued on and eventually he became the first member of the white tribe to see what the Shoshone always referred to as the hoary feathers, the Teton range. That name, the Tetons, would come in about a dozen years when some Iroquois scouts on the McKenzie expedition would say they look like Tetons. Anyway, he continues on, goes down into the valley that would take on the name of its most famous trapper, Dr. Davy Jackson. He went south through that valley and crossed over the Snake River, which was no small undertaking in December. Crossed over the Snake somewhere between Wilson and Jackson, then went over Teton Pass. Dropped into the Teton Valley, and it must have gotten real cold, because that's where he decided he was going to hole up for about a month. After a few weeks waiting out the coldest month in a south-facing dugout, John Coulter began trekking north and into a high forested area filled with wonders. There he saw boiling water shoot from the ground. 
massive frozen waterfalls, and perhaps even a standing petrified forest. Coulter continued east, dropped through the Absorcas, then crossed his old path north of Cody and made his way back to the cabin at the confluence of the Bighorn and Yellowstone rivers. He'd spent over four months of winter trekking through deep snow with only a single shot musket, the clothes on his back, and a piece of flint to make fires. Coulter, of course, reported to Manuel Lisa that he had no encounters with the Spanish or hostile tribes, but he did see countless beaver lodges. His trek would help inspire hundreds of other men to come west in search of the coveted pelts, setting off what we now call the Mountain Man era. Within just a few years, John Coulter would be forced to watch as his best friend was slaughtered by the Blackfeet in southwest Montana. He would escape from the angry tribe, but the event would send him back east and away from the dangerous frontier. John Coulter assisted William Clark in creating the first comprehensive map of what would be the Western United States in 1810. Uh, he then built a home, a little cabin in Missouri, and was next door neighbors to another pretty famous American explorer named Daniel Boone. John Coulter died of liver failure in 1812.